For 150 years plus, college football valued tradition over everything. But like everything swirling around the sport these days, change is coming faster than Nick Saban bolting for the college game day set. This fall, 13 major conference schools will be joining new leagues, including two universities near the Pacific Ocean that will be playing in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Before yet another unprecedented development, a 12-team playoff begins, our Ryan McGee with a college football syllabus before class and practice is in session. Ah, summer is here. The mercury's rising. The AC's getting cranked up. Ugh, I can already feel myself sweating through my clothes. But don't worry. I have a frosty fix for that fever. Just close your eyes. Conjure up images of crisp fall foliage swaying gently in the cool breezes of autumn. Dancing to the snare snap of a drumline. That's right, college football is just weeks away. The electricity, the atmosphere. It's the beauty of college football. But to be ready for this season, we're going to need to do a little homework because our familiar 155-year-old friend has never looked more different. Like that one crazy aunt who shows up every Thanksgiving looking like another episode of Botched. So who and what is where? Open your notes app and listen up. The Titans of the Southwest are now in the Southeastern Conference. The Pac-12 is now the two-pack, as everyone else has either departed for the Big Ten, Big 12, or if you're in the Bay Area, the ACC. No, not the Chesapeake Bay, the San Francisco Bay. The travel secretaries of all these schools are gonna have a field day. Kalen DeBoer is the new head coach at Bama. So yeah, Nick Saban is no longer calling the shots in Tuscaloosa, though he does still live there, has an office there, and his statue stands right outside the stadium. Jimbo Fisher is also gone, replaced as the number one 12th man by Mike Elko. And Jim Harbaugh walked off Michigan's CFP celebration stage and headed for the NFL. That leaves only three active college head coaches with national championship rings. North Carolina's Mac Brown won it back in 2005. The other two, Clemson's Dabo Sweeney and Georgia's Kirby Smart, live only 75 miles apart, and they play week one in Atlanta. Meanwhile, the transfer portal is running like a merry-go-round driven by Max Verstappen. Washington State QB Cam Ward is now a hurricane. Dylan Gabriel, who I'm pretty sure played for Newt Rockney, is now with his third team under center at Oregon. Former Clemson QB DJ Ui Ungulale is now with the Tigers' nemesis and fellow ACC realignment rabble rouser, Florida State. It is a new era of college football transfer portal really all throughout the year. All of this while Ohio State just had a better off-season talent hall than anyone not named the Philadelphia Eagles. In Colorado, man, I don't even know what all's going on with the Buffaloes. I just know I can't stop reading Coach Prime's social media posts. Then fall will, well, fall into a wintertime, the likes and lengths of which we have never seen a college football playoff bracket expanding from four teams to 12. Imagine Friday and then the Saturday on campus. That's what I think a lot of these teams have wanted to earn. See, I told you it was a lot to know. But honestly, all we really need to know is this. Your school is still your school. College football is still awesome. <gasps> and kickoff is just weeks away. Can not wait. There's millions of people that agree with you there, Ryan. The 155th season of college football, in fact, kicks off August 24th when Florida State, still smarting from being left out of the final 14 playoff, can make a statement trying to get into the brand new expanded version Ryan just talked about when they face ACC rival Georgia Tech in Dublin, Ireland. Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Coverage begins at noon Eastern that day. It's a Saturday, of course, on ESPN. Give me something. Ah.